at the Interfaith Center, having held over 20 town hall meetings around the state, that health care access and coverage are of great concern to the citizens of our Commonwealth. In my faith tradition, Jesus felt that health care was extremely important. His first acts, one looks through the gospel books, Jesus' first acts were those of providing health care, providing healing to those in need. What we have here also is an illogical document, a document that shifts taxes from those who can afford it to those who are hungry, to those who are poor, to those who are sick. It is an illogical document as it is now presented because by cutting primary care, it forces people into tertiary care, the most expensive care. It forces people into emergency rooms, which will do nothing more than increase the cost of our health care system. So I would invite the governor and the legislature to consider a balanced approach to a balanced budget. Make this immoral document into a moral, ethical document, one which we can all be proud. Thank you. Thank you. The presentations we've heard today and the stories they reflect are really just a small drop in the pond. You know how you drop that rock in the water and it expands? All of you could tell a story. You could tell a story of someone in your family, your neighborhood, your church, your community who is hurting now because health care does not meet the needs. Health insurance has gotten just so astronomical, it is unbelievable. What do we do about this? We have got to stand up and speak. We have to encourage other people to stand up and speak. We cannot let the no's be the ones who make yes a, no, a never happening event. It is time for this to happen. What do they say? Bad things happen when good people do nothing? Okay. Some people have given up. Don't ever, ever give up. As I say to people in VOP all the time, if we reach for the stars and we fall among the trees, we are still higher than we've been. <laughs> For all of those people who try to say that health care is unpatriotic, I'd say, and for us to give up, America would not even exist if people had given up. We would not be the country we are if people just let other people roll over them and do the wrong thing when we knew what the right thing is. It's time for us to do right. It is time for us to demand that the people who represent us do right. We elected them. We did not coronate them. They are still supposed to be responsible to us. If we want a royalty, we still be part of England. We're not. Okay. Now, I don't want to get out of sorts about this, so I better go back to what they both <laughs> But what I want to tell you is, when you sit at home and you get upset, you need to pick up the phone and make somebody else you know get upset. I have a friend in New Mexico who's always fussing with me, and my answer to her is, have you talked to your representatives? Do you know who your representatives are? Have you contacted them? If she tells me no, I tell her, stop talking to <laughs> So today's event, is part of a week-long national push toward insisting that Congress act now on health care reform and listen to everyday Americans, not the insurance lobbyists, who are spending millions to block health care reform and protect their profits. And when you think about how much Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield made in the last quarter, and they still spent millions on the lobby, hey, they still got money they haven't told us about. Over 40 events are held all over the country, and we are not done fighting. I would like to thank all of the legislators, community members, and supporters who came out today. I would especially like to thank the Sierra Club who came here to express their support before heading over to Senators Warner's and Webb's offices about protecting the environment. We 
know that we all need to stick together in crisis. We need to rein in corporate greed, regulate Wall Street, address global warming, create more jobs, shore up our economy, protect workers' rights, and finally achieve quality, affordable health care for all Americans. And I have one last party thing that is my own song. You know how you can have your own drummer? I looked up the other day the fact that our Congress will make on an average of $193,000 a year. That does not include the cost of the health insurance. That on average, they pay 20% on their cost of health. Why are we being denied what they have when we elected them and put them in? Okay? So if you don't have another button you can push, push that one. Okay, have a good day.